this uh, project is centered around Nigel, which is a mechatronical driven and scale autonomous vehicle. And in today's presentation, we'll be going over the novel design architecture of the vehicle, that is Nigel itself, uh, its modeling and analysis, followed by devising a robust sinturial control framework for theoretically guaranteeing sinturial transferability of autonomy oriented control systems, and finally, uh, talk about experimental validation of this entire framework using Nigel. So let me take a step back here and talk about the broader context of this research. Uh, first of all, why are we talking about autonomous vehicles in a mechatronics conference? Well, arguably autonomous vehicles are supposed to be at par, if not if uh, better than humans at driving. And while algorithms can lead us up to a certain stage in that process, we can certainly start leveraging the inherent cyber physical nature and uh, really stressing the physical part here of the underlying vehicle architecture to now uh, enhance its capabilities. And uh, for this, we can of course leverage the mechatronics principles and uh, approaches to uh, start looking at things like increasing the maneuverability of the underlying chassis or enhancing the control configuration space through redundant uh, actuation as well as improving tolerance against any faults, thereby enhancing the capabilities of such systems. And for this, we can start looking at unconventional vehicle designs. Uh, which will naturally be accompanied by advanced control strategies, especially in case of redundant control. But there are of course a few challenges associated with this. For any autonomic oriented control system, the first and foremost challenge is the real world uncertainties and disturbances that you cannot model, that may not be modeled, etc. And can you now theoretically guarantee the simple transferability of such systems? So Nigel, as I said, is a mechatronically redundant scale autonomous vehicle and the mechatronic redundancy starts from the actuation redundancy itself as shown in the figure here. Uh, where you can see that each wheel of the vehicle is two degrees of freedom as it can be steered as well as driven at the same time. And that leads to multiple possibilities of drive and steering actuations which again can be uh, permuted and combined with each other to realize more configurations. However, uh, Nigel is not just actuation redundant system, but it's also uh, mechatronically redundant in that it has sensor uh, redundancy and uh, using the comprehensive sensor suite for both interceptive and exclusive perception. Uh, it has a distributed edge computing architecture, which can be used to separate the high level and low level autonomy tasks. It's got multiple communication interfaces and uh, offers compatibility to a variety of software frameworks and APIs to flexibly develop and deploy autonomy algorithms. And what you see on the right side is that Nigel is completely open source vehicle design which basically can allow anyone using it to now expand upon any of the subsystems highlighted there. So before, during and after developing Nigel, we were constantly comparing it against some of the state of the art uh, platforms available out there. And this table uh, highlights uh, 12 such uh, established platforms. Uh, I won't be going into the, the details of each and every cell of the table. but. Uh, we tried to com co comprehensively analyze not only the te technical aspects but also other uh, economic factors as well as the scale and uh, viability of the product in general for uh, research use cases and more specifically for academic research use cases. And to the best of our knowledge, uh, Nigel has turned out to be the first ever vehicle which is mo modular and open source architecture which provides mechatronic redundancy across all the subsystems, uh, has independent four wheel drive and four wheel steerable configuration with extended uh, steering angles and finally all of this within just a small footprint of 114 scale. So now let's talk about modeling and analysis of uh, Nigel. Uh, more specifically, generically, we were uh, we are here talking about a four-wheel drive, four-wheel steer architecture vehicle, uh, wherein kinematic analysis clearly uh, states that the system has a total of three degrees of maneuverability, uh, which is the most superior configuration across all stable uh, possible architectures and this is uh, in terms of two degrees of steerability and one degree of mobility which are a resultant of the internal uh, kinematic redundancy within the uh, actuation of the robot. For dynamics analysis what you see on the right side is a free, di free body diagram of the four wheel drive four wheel steer vehicle with uh, kinematic geometric and dynamic parameters uh, visualized. So we use this uh, representation to now derive a non-linear reoplane dynamics model of the vehicle using the utilizer approach and then linearized it uh, to what you see here into a state space model wherein uh, 
uh, I would like to draw your attention to the uh, fact that this vehicle now has uh, all the four steerable uh, angles as well as the parameter dependence on environmental factors such as the road tire interconnect through coefficients of friction. We then analyze this model uh, to find out that yes, it has a stable equilibrium point under nominal conditions. But what's uh, important to note here is uh, the plot on the top right uh, that the system damping ratio is actually changing as you vary the uh, operating conditions. The operating conditions here being the velocity of the vehicle as well as the friction coefficient. What this suggests is that even at a constant velocity of the vehicle, which is the system state, uh, a change in the operating conditions that is the frictional coefficient can actually affect the system performance and that can potentially lead to any symptorial gaps because of unmodeled uh, or uncertain frictional parameters. What you see at the bottom there is a table highlighting uh, measured and identified parameters of the physical Nigel and uh, another uh, time to highlight your attention to the uh, frictional coefficient here which is estimated at 0.4 for nominal conditions uh, which in our lab were dry concrete floor. But uh, as we see in the experimental results, we have varied them to now uh, become uncertain during the test cases. So let us now take a look at the other half of the contributions, which is the robust imperial control framework. Uh, first of all, we use this linearized state space model to uh, derive a generalized open loop system uh, with full state feedback, as you can see. And here, I would like to highlight your attention towards the two outputs, Y1 and Y2, which consist of both uh, the states of the vehicle as well as the control actions. And what this led to the uh, control design problem is that now we have a controller that can uh, track the reference trajectory while minimizing the control effort required to realize that. Uh, in terms of addressing the sinctorial gap, uh, as uh, Dharma highlighted, we looked at the frictional coefficients of each road tire interconnect as the uncertain parameters and assumed that these would pragmatically vary between a range of 0.1 to 1. And what uh, these four parameters lead to is a, a set of 16 different systems which we can now construct a fixed polytope of and we can use this as a convex hull to now have a polytopic model representation of the system which can then be used for control synthesis. Uh, in terms of the robust optimal controller itself, uh, we have devised a mixed H to H infinity controller. Uh, this basically does two things. One is placing the closed loop system pools within the LMI region for guaranteeing closed loop stability, and also simultaneously minimizing the H to H infinity trade-off criteria uh, for ensuring optimal performance. Now let us look at the results. First of all, I would like to highlight the comparative analysis of this novel architecture that we have proposed uh, with respect to the conventional Ackermann steered configuration. What you see in the plots here is the h 2 infinity trade-off that I was saying, and the Burnett optimal solution has been highlighted here, uh, wherein we can see that uh, the h 2 energy infinity uh, indices for Ackermann steered are higher than that for the proposed architecture, which indicates clearly that the conventional system is poorly robust as compared to what we have proposed. And uh, just for clarity, uh, what this means is as the robustness is higher, uh, the symptorial gap uh, is uh, narrower. So in a way, we can say that we have tried to address the symptorial gap using the design architecture of the vehicle itself. We are not even uh, yet to the control design part. Of course, that has enhanced it further, but even just the design has. Uh, reduce the simple gap. Now let us talk a little bit about the experimental setup that we used. Uh, all the simulations conducted were in MATLAB and uh, these are all the different parameters that we both analyzed and simulated for the vehicle and I would like to again highlight here that the vehicle states are the side slip angle beta and the yaw rate which is psi dot here and these are, uh, although these are the states, the temporal trajectories of this results in the Cartesian trajectory that you see on the extreme right which was used for analysis and uh, revising the error metric for the uh, performance of the controller. In terms of real world experimentation, uh, the experiments were conducted uh, as Sunday highlighted on a concrete floor uh, within our lab uh, under a motion capture system for uh, state feedback. And I would like to again highlight here two facts. One is that if you see the inset figure there, uh, you can notice the that we had spilled uh, so called the solutions of varying concentrations along the reference trajectories 
and this was in addition to some of the residues and uh, some uh, sand particles from previous experiments just to make sure that the friction coefficients are not constant over the entire test surface. The other fact that I would like to highlight is uh, if you look at the video, uh, especially for the 8 maneuver, we had exaggerated uh, disturbances injected into the system in form of the port test to analyze the disturbance rejection capabilities of the uh, robust interior control. So now I would like to uh, talk a little bit about the benchmarking performance. Here, what you see is a comparison of open loop control uh, replay. Uh, then we have a non robust controller, which is a controller that has been devised just to the pole placement method. And then the proposed robust controller for six different maneuvers. Now, each of these maneuver is a standardized vehicle dynamics characterization maneuver, and it excites the vehicle dynamics, uh, the off lane vehicle dynamics to be specific in a very specific way. What we can qualitatively notice from these plots is if you look at the figure B, C and D which represent lane change, skid pad and fish hook maneuvers. Uh, up to a point we can see that most of the like all the three systems perform similar, more or less similar lane simulation as well as real world. But after the transients we can see that uh, the system performance deviates depending on the controller and whether it, it was in simulation or in real world. Figure A represents a straight line uh, maneuver which was more of a uh, stabilizing control, control problem than tracking problem and here we can clearly see that uh, the deviations are uh, very apparent from even in figure A as well as figure E which represents slalom maneuver. But one uh, salient thing here in these two specific plots is that we can see that the open loop system is performing better than the non-robust controller which is not what we expected at the beginning of the experiment and this is what I would like to highlight that this is only because by, uh, by the nature of these maneuvers and chance uh, because the open loop system is not actively correcting for any errors if they occur down the road. Finally in the figure 8 maneuver as you can see uh, the variation in the trajectory profiles is uh, quite high as opposed to any other maneuvers and this uh, is what I highlighted because uh, we had uh, the exaggerated disturbances injected into the Finally, uh, let's talk quantitatively here. Uh, to analyze the performance of all these different uh, architectures, we came up with an error metric using the root mean squared error of the Cartesian pose and then took an L2 norm of that to convert it to a single metric that has been reported on the table you see on the right. Uh, apart from the whole post of numbers there, uh, there are two things that I would like to highlight your attention towards. Uh, one thing is the magnitude of error is significantly less in terms of the robust control framework that we have proposed. And secondly, the difference uh, difference in the error between sim and real columns there represents the sectorial gap, which means that uh, even though the controller has performed better in simulation, it may or may not do so in the real world. So the difference uh, in there is the sectorial gap indirectly. And we can see that for the robust control case, that difference is also extremely low and more or less uh, negligible. To summarize, uh, we presented the novel design architecture of Nigel. We talked a little bit about modeling and analysis of this system. Then we presented the robust sectorial control framework and finally uh, talked about the experimental validation that we conducted to uh, validate both the design as well as the sectorial control framework in this work. That brings us to the end of this presentation and uh, thank you very much for your attention. We will be happy to take any questions at this point. Thank you very much.